do you? Now Hello. we are there. Hey, it's How crazy going on with another episode of OSH Radio, and I'm interviewing Carl Craig Hancock today. That's correct. And I've known you for quite a lot of years. Uh, you're with the band Turkurpa, one correct. of the originators of that band, right? And I like to say about yes. Turkurpa, I always considered you guys new classic rock. That's new, not nude, although sometimes you guys get nude, but that's beside the point. Correct. Um, yeah, we get called that a lot, so we'll go with new classic rock. That sounds good to me. Because you have that feel of classic rock, but you're new. So it, it's, a, I, I don't know, I think that's, a, you know, like I know uh, we're, we're going to get into this, but I know you had gotten uh, four Grammys working with Joey Wells. Eight and, Grammys, uh, eight, Grammys. You, eight. Eight, eight Grammys, eight. that's good. Yeah. See, I only got two and you got eight. Thanks a lot, you know. Yeah, well, you got yeah, Grammy, so. eight Grammy nominations. I got two Grammy nominations. You did get course, your pitch on the PA musician with them. Yeah, but I, I have to admit, my what I always say about Grammys is Grammys is like for musicians, what uh, you know, like assholes. Like almost everybody has at least one. You know, <laughs> well, you know, it's winning it we, that you got to do, man. Never, and I realize we never that. made the big show, but that's not what was important. It's just nice to be recognized by somebody. Especially that, a rock and roll god like Joey Wells, you know? That is nice. And what I was going to say is you were actually in the top 40s in what, New Zealand? Uh, our first top 40 hit was in New Zealand in July and August of 2010. We were number 40, and we were number 40, and we never went up or down, and then that was it. So that was our first one. There's the, one the one song I, me and Joey had had hit first place in that new Sony's online thing for right it was a it, it sounds impressive to say but it's not like you where you were in the top 40 in New Zealand it was like number one in the old fart rock and roll category on Sony well and, and which is like a very country. tuned in spot you know right and some of our charted songs not the one in New Zealand but some of them were from Joey's country music station um affiliations we had we charted also we also charted five different times That's and we had great. number one we had a number one new requested song in japan back when uh that yukashimi um nuclear power plant went down from the from the uh what is it called a tsunami over there right. and it was just because of words i wrote to a song called wonder why and the words said and the nuke plant's got a crack but we can fix that with a patch and they just they just made it their number one new requested song, not their number one requested song on, on Japanese radio that time. That is great, though. I mean, yeah, I know, you know, everybody, well, most people that have followed me know I've done things with Joey Wells. You've done things with Joey Wells. Yes. And I think he is sometimes a forgotten treasure because he's oh. played with all kinds of people. And like me and you joked about the Beatles opened for him one time. They, they opened up across Europe in all those little clubs back when they were the Silver Beatles. Yes. He has tapes in his basement and lit it. So I shouldn't say that because they don't go to lit it to rob him. It's all secured and wired. But he's got tapes in his um uh, basement of them in these old clubs that are just a worth of fortune sitting on a shelf, you know, with him and Bill Haley in the comments and the Beatles. Yeah, it's amazing. But getting back to you. Oh, I know okay. usually we, we call you Craig instead of Carl. What do you prefer, Craig or Carl? Craig. I go by Craig. It's it's my middle name. My mom named me Carl after her dead brother and then never wanted to hear me call it, which is just crazy, but okay. So I wound up being called Craig my whole life. So what got you started? Now, you, you played bass, but what got you started doing music? I was 25 and my father died. I hadn't even pl I played drums as a child. I took you know six years of percussion off and on. But I never picked up a stringed instrument or a musical instrument of any type other than that. And then when I inherited my father's guitar when he passed away at age 25, I call him my guitar sensei, Greg Hagen. He sat down and I don't know, I'm going to try and show you with my fingers on screen. And he placed on my fingers on the neck of the string. And as soon as he let go, my fingers would fall apart. And for about six hours, he taught me three chords to get me to play 12 bar blues. And when I finally got through one set of the 12 bars, he said, okay, I'm going home. I just I just taught you 20,000 songs, which he did. You know, it's Led Zeppelin's nothing but blues sped up, you know? Yeah, so. a lot of songs are, and people don't realize that. Like uh, Jimi Hendrix, that a lot of that is uh, blues. Right. Uh, blues is kind of the uh, 
stepfather of uh, rock and roll, or maybe not even a stepfather. The foundation. The, yeah. the true father, you know? Yes, the foundation at the very least, yes. Uh, yeah. so. And then uh, your band, Takerpa, how did that come about? Um, well, it started out with me and uh, uh, someone who's no longer involved with the band, Dave Troutman, a good friend of mine and brother. He got sick and had a brain tumor and he just got out of music. Um, but um, he, um, me and him, we started this band and we put it together and we were just in the garage with hopes and dreams like everybody else. And then we met this guy, John Carez. You might know him. And we handed doesn't him. doesn't ring a bell. Is he crazy? Yeah, he, yeah we crazy? handed him a demo of ours and it was just a crudely made thing with the magic marker written upon to Kerpo on its on the face of the cd and he gave it to this guy who happened to be the keyboard player for bill haley in the comments named joey wells and joey wells fell in love with this and became my good friend he calls me his pal tells me he loves me all the time you know he, you know we always do the see you later in a while crocodile see you later alligator routine um it's just, yeah, I love Joey to death, you know. Well, let's not, let's hope not, because he's getting up there in the years. Oh, let's yeah, hope he not is. I didn't, I didn't mean it that way. I meant that I love the man, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, as far as I was concerned, me and you, uh, a couple months ago, we both went and visited him because we were uh, concerned because neither one of us had heard from him. Correct. And he, he's doing okay. He does have some ailments that we won't mention because it probably is not good to mention. Uh, but uh, he's okay. what 83, 84 now, 84, something like that. 84, 84, and but, he's still doing his records. And uh, yeah, I, to give him more accolades, he released music in eight decades now the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, 2000s, 2010s, two eight decades. He's released music that's that amazing. amazing, yes. Yeah. And I don't think he gets the respect he needs for everything he's done either. You know, mm -hmm. I've 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 come to find this, and this is something I've said to some of my karate buddies and martial arts buddies, is you know, the young people today, they look back at the things that we did in the old days and they say, Oh, they were crazy. You know, right, uh, right. the stuff we did for propaganda, the stuff we did for advertising, the stuff we did to promote, and they're like, Oh, those guys are a bunch of knuckleheads and stuff. <laughs> But, you know, it was a different day. And sometimes I think, I hate to say it, though, sometimes we've experienced more and forgotten more than some of these young people ever have done. And we are us old farts. I'll call myself an old fart at 63. I forget how old are you now. You're I'm 64, sir. So, uh, you know, we have, although we can seem like a bunch of knuckle knuckleheads at times, we have some information in there that could be useful to the younger generation. And they just don't always realize it, you know? Neither did we when we were their age, I don't think. No, you know? we didn't, though. But, but me yeah. and you did, because we did hook up and do some things with Joey Wells, you know? Yeah. Yes, we did. Um, he's. Uh, I could show you if you let me turn the phone around a couple things on my walls right now. Sure. All right. Um, let me get it. Let me see how I reverse. How do I reverse the phone? Uh, I'll just Could have to turn it. Well, no, just I'll turn just, around if you want to. I'll just turn the phone around. And you'll still hear me talking. We're okay. seeing your your house here. Don't be careful what pictures you show us on the walls, you know. All right. Well, Joey Wells, uh, the first thing he ever recorded with us was a song called With You and My Life. And I framed two frames of it. And this one's first one's going to say, is that coming in frame? Can you see all that? Yep, I can see that. It says, Carl, with you and you and my life turned out great. Let's play, let's use it in play, in place of leeches on this radio CD. Regards, Joey Wells. Here's the original copy of Joey Wells playing keyboards on that um, song. And then I'll just go through this whole wall of fame real quick for you, all right? Yeah, sure. And this is all this. This is what I call my hallway of fame because I'm not in the hall of fame. But the lightning's pouring here, but I'll just go through it kind of slowly so I don't look like a blur. But this is all because I met you. You gave Joey a CD. And I have eight Grammy nominations and five top 40 hits. But here we go. I'm just going to show you. I'm not going to really explain everything. That's a bunch of business cards over the years. Here's a here's one of the top 40 hits from the Recording Academy. And, you know, stuff from Joey signed. And he always like he always wrote Kara Carl or Kara Craig. Here's more top 40 hits and stuff. Here's you can recognize this Canadian records and Comet Tail. These are recording contracts over here. And it's dark. Can you see it? Yep, I can see it. 
Okay, there's a picture of me get, getting the first CDs we had published with Joey. See that? Boy, you both look young on there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, all right, moving right along. And here's another one. This shows our our first album with Joey. He appears in this song, on this album, in a song called One Last Memory, One Last Breath. He plays keyboards on this on our first album. This is our second album with a different singer. That's the first um, really check I've received anywhere, and it was from him, and it was for four twenty. So I love it because it was four twenty, four dollars and twenty cents. There but you go. One of, my, one of my favorite numbers. Um, okay, here's another frame with just more stuff. A lot of this is the the radio compilation CDs, which I'm sure you were on, John. Oh, wait yes, a minute. I was on What's a number this? Of those. What is this? Hold on, everybody out there in hey. Cyberland. It's Ragazine with the Kerpa. And there I am. And there's the guy that helped me form the Kerpa. And there's Matt Kramer, my friend of 30 years. You know Jimmy. Um, Who did that Jimmy magazine? Mc... Ragazine. I think John Carez was the editor of that. <laughs> I think I was yeah, the editor, the article. producer, the writer, the, you Listen, know. And I valued that so much. I framed the whole thing and put it up on my Hall of Fame. You know? That's very nice, but, Greg. I like that. All right, here's some more. Here's some more. I'm just going slow. It's more recording contracts. It's crooked. <laughs> um, here comes some more. Same thing, contracts, summer CDs, just different things, different places where we charted. And the last one, and I just made this one up. This is a new one I made, and it really shows a lot of the, I don't know if you can see all that in frame. Is the whole thing coming in frame? Yeah, I see it. And then all this stuff here, these are all radio compilation CDs. And of course, the top two are our our um our, our original music, you know, songs, 10 songs each, the self-titled to Kerpa and Hidden Broken Pieces, which was cool in its own effect because the top one had 10 hidden pictures representing the songs, like Children's Highlights magazine, hidden pictures. Right, right. I love the whole magazines. thing was environmentally friendly, no shrink wrap. Except for maybe the plastic the CD was on, but everything could be colored too if you wanted, including the CD label. But yeah, so Joey was. He, I'm back. Hi everyone. Hey um, there, Joey, Joey. Um, he was um involved in actually three pieces of music with us. Two to two to two to. You know, we never released, and then the one that did get released on our first album. But. There we go. Let me get this back on stand. Hey, that's so nice. Thinking. I like your your hallway of fame. I like that. I'm glad I'm a part of it. That's nice. Are you part of it? <laughs> you know, it's like the butterfly effect. You know, we gave something to you. You gave it to Joey. It became like this uh, musical communicable disease, and it became all that. So that is great. Know. Well, that's a, oh, you know the fantastic. thing you should you should always pay forward. You know. Yes. 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 You know, because of him, I mean, I'm an ASCAP registered musician because he used to release us on Ursula BMI, and then we became ASCAP musicians, registered musicians. So now he received, he did Comet Tail ASCAP, and you can see that in the hallway of fame. Some of the contracts were BMI ones, and some of them from Ursula, and then some of them right. were Comet Tail. Yeah, you know, and the all those um all those um um. Radio compilation CDs, at the end, they were being released to over 10,000 uh, radio stations around the world every time we got on one. That's some pretty good, you know, I mean, Joey never made a cent. He really didn't, you know, and he worked his butt for us. He, he represented us for 14 years at Middle, the Independent Music Festival in, in mm -hmm. Cannes, France. Is that how you say Cannes? It's spelled C-A-N-N-E-S, but I think you just say Cannes. Yeah, Cannes. Um, Oh, yeah, Cannes, France. Cannes, um, Cannes. We yeah, all know what you mean. Right. You know, and that we through him, we we were um downloaded and streamed in over 25 countries around the world and had airplay. And you know, it's just amazing considering you've seen where we practice. We played to the spiders in my basement most of the time. <laughs> you know? Uh, hey, that's some of the best times. Uh, those are fun when I came over, yeah. It came uh, over, and yeah, what people didn't probably don't know is, yeah, a couple of times I uh, sang on two of your songs when we did live yes. shows, yes. which was fun. Yes. Uh, that was fun to do, because I was always playing uh, bass or sometimes keyboards, depending on who went out sang, with the seventh player. You sang, you sang, you sang. Yeah, and I sang with yeah. you guys. Yeah. Uh, bass and keyboards I did sometimes on seventh player, not with you guys. 
what yes. I sang with you guys. But that was fun. And you Another know, the players, one of John's bands, they were just at um, Love Drafts not too long ago, which I yeah, missed. Yeah, we so. just we did a 20 year anniversary actually of our first CD, which is that's hard to believe too. So let's let's go back just there. So you started playing guitar a little bit, but how did you get to the bass from the guitar? Uh, honestly, and everybody will laugh at this. I was always the worst guitar player in the room, so they would go, "You're on bass," and I, you know, and eventually I was just a bass player, you know, and it just well, made to, sense to me. I have to admit that with me, I'm a bad musician. I've kind of found my hole with uh, writing lyrics. Uh, I'll probably always be a bad singer, probably always be a bad musician, but I don't think I'm too bad with lyrics. So that's, you know, and that's what I did with Joey. I wrote lyrics, sent them to Joey. He'd do some tweaking and then uh, some songs we sing together. Some I just do some backups. So one song I did, uh, me, my son and my son-in-law were backups to Joey. And I enjoyed that. So that, so that's how you got on bass then. And, uh, how long? Well, how many bands have you been in before Tukurpa? What might you have been in? Uh, I was in a band. It was the second hardest working band in Central PA, and its time it was called Real to Real. And the only other band who had more gigs a month than us was You You You. You remember them? Mm -hmm. you, you, we were we were we were booked in rotation everywhere for two and a half years with fifteen to twenty gigs a month, fifteen to twenty five some months. And um, we were in we were sometimes we were at a house band for an old like the Rusty Now. We were at a house band. Until we got um, what's that band out of Marysville, the Jelly Bricks? I think they replaced us. <laughs> um, but you know, it was they, I just didn't like it. I, you know, like I said, we were highly successful playing all those gigs every month, and it, it, to me, it was like I just wasn't fulfilling. I had to do original music. I had all this stuff inside me that I had to get out. And like you, I wrote music a lot. I brought other things to the bands besides my. I guess okay, adequate, not shabby, but not great bass playing, in my opinion. But I'm my own worst critic. Um, well, and you then, know, I I had that little uh, country band for a while, and uh, we had a lot of gigs with that. And me and the other, me and the singer didn't try to do too much that co uh, complex. He he was a good singer. He'd play uh, he'd play rhythm guitar, and I just play the root of what he was playing. And the way we had to look, talking about not being a great bass player, is when you have a whole band, you don't have to be a star. You just play your part. It's like a choir. You it fill is. It that is. hole that's supposed to be your hole. Oh, it you is. I, I held my own. Away. Yeah, I held my own. I, I get what you're saying. You know, I just, I'm not, I'm no flea. How's that? I'm no John. Yeah, Anderson. exactly. I don't think I'm no Chris anybody Squire. is. <laughs> if, any, nobody's flea but flea, and he's getting old, and he's probably not as much flea anymore either, you know? <laughs> And rest in peace, John Entwistle and Chris Squire. Yes. But I mean, it's it's sometimes it's about being the part of the whole, not having to be a, a, a fantastic. You just have to be a part of the whole and fill in your gap that's yours to fill, you know? Correct. I, you know, I was I brought a lot of other things to the band. I was the band's and still am Grand Central Station for DeCurple. You know, I'm the switchboard. I'm, you know, I'm the go-getter. I'm the one that pushes things. I'm the one that has probably more drive than anybody else. And any kind of times you hear any of our recordings, you'll hear little whistles and bells, I like to call them, like explosions or this or that, or a heartbeat or, a, you know, a heartbeat wave machine going flatline. And it was all my ideas. And I helped with a probably another mutual friend of ours, Marshall Deasy. You know Marshall? Yeah, I know he the was name. Um, our yeah, he was our sounding engineer with Joe Trojak over at um, um, Progressive Studios. We recorded three quarters of our stuff there. And he he would, I, I went up to him, like, say, for Mayhem, that song that was a top 40 hit in New Zealand. And I said, at the end of this, I need an explosion. I said, but in the beginning, I need one of them old air high. Remember the old World War II sirens when they cranked right, them right. in the air raids? And he, and he put all that together for us right on the spot. And then he slows into the end. He mixed it with some broken glass sounds. And, and he says, does this sound good? I said, that's exactly what I'm hearing, Marshall. So, was, you know, even if the person's not in a band, sometimes your producer becomes an intricate part of everything you're doing. You know? Well, sometimes a very intricate part, especially if you have the right sound engineer. Yeah, or a sound engineer in this case. Marshall, the best. If you're out there and you see this, Marshall, we love you. So... That's how you then you went from that band to doing to Kerr because you're wanting to do original music then. 
Yeah, we actually sat down in my kitchen where I'm sitting right now. It was different back then, but um, <laughs> and I said, I said, um, look, guys, we're spinning our wheels here. I said we can keep getting booked and playing and being someone's jukebox, but you know, in local bars, you're not getting the attention that I, I was craving. I mean, people come there to have a good time, and they're not there to just see you. They're there, there to talk and everything else. So there's all this talking going on while you're trying to play, and it just wasn't for me. You know, by the third set, and it, it, you booked 15, 25 gigs a month for two and a half years. You stop thinking about everything else except by the third set. You're looking at everything and going, oh, I got to wrap this wire. Oh, we got to move these big SP1 speakers and put the take down the lights. And it all just became work. It, it was no longer fun. I guess it's the best way to put it. That, you know? that is very true. I used to laugh because people would say, oh, following your band, it was such a wild lifestyle. And I turned to the one guy and I said, how is this a wild lifestyle? No, he, made a, he made a point, though. The people that follow you are just partying. Right. You, because we're not that big, we have to not only perform and make the music, but we have to load, unload. You know, we, yeah. you know most of us cannot <laughs> afford our, our own roadies or everything. No, you no. Know, <laughs> we borrow our uncle's van or something to move the equipment, you know. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, I've even known guys that uh, kept dating people, they did girls they didn't want to date just because she had a van. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that kind of stuff goes on. And it's not the the big love affair that people think. You're not always no. having the great time. It's a lot of hard work. Unless you're listening out there, young people who want to aspire to be in the bands, unless you get two back-to-back -back gigs like a Friday and a Saturday night at the same place, you have to load out every night. And you're not getting home till sometimes sunrise. And by the time you get everything unloaded and back into your practice spot. So you just worked from, say, four o'clock in the afternoon to well into almost five o'clock in the morning, 11 hours, 12 hours later. And you split 500 hours five ways. So when you take away your gas and what you spend at the bar, you, you're probably in the hole about 10 to 20 bucks, you know, and you haven't had any sleep. You know, so, yeah, it's well, not was, what I was big thinks. one time. One time I realized talking to the guys, you know, do we always need these full stacks and this and that, you know, right. a half stack. Can that stuff can was get heavier back a half then. Stack instead of a full stack. And do you need this? Do you need a lot of times you can get away with less equipment than you want to take that than you want to. Cause sometimes it's almost like, uh, I'll say, I'll, I'll use a nice word. It's almost like a phallic symbol. You want the biggest phallic symbol out there when uh -huh. you're on stage. Right, right. But, but if <laughs> At the next few your... ones, we're, we're the biggest one in the room then. <laughs> <laughs> Mine goes to 11, you know? Yeah. you know, Right. But um, uh, you don't always need that, and especially if you're hauling your own stuff around all the time. And, uh, you know, I knew guys that would wanted, wanted to take five, six different guitars with them and stuff, and it's like, we need all this? Although one thing I didn't know you, I realized you do need, it's always good to carry extra drumsticks. Even though I was the bass player, I kept extra, a bag of extra drumsticks in my car. It's even smart, though I was I've had player. drummers forget them. I've had drummers forget them. And they break. And they break. And they break. <laughs> yeah. Pencils you know? and pens do not make good drumsticks. You know? You yeah, know, that's... I just so I, now, I, have, I have some good memories of playing out back in that cover band. Don't get me wrong. And the crowd was good when there was one. And when there wasn't one, the bartender and the and the you know the waitress were the people we played to, and they were great, <laughs> you know. But you know, it was sometimes just, just the wonderful. slow nights were good, though. I have to admit, too. I'll I'll admit that. Uh now Sir Kerpa right now is kind of like uh, on a hiatus. I don't think you're really producing anything right now, no. but what do you see for the future, maybe? Anything? The only thing I see, and you're aware that my handicapped daughter five years ago passed away, Brianna, that I'd raised. Yes, sorry her. for that. Well, that's okay. I mean, she's better off. She, she really, she really is. I don't even know if she ever knew who I was, John. You know that. Um, I'm sure she probably did in some way. In some way, yeah. But I, I ever, I never failed to see it. But I, I thought she, I think she thinks I was the royal butt wiper. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, that's an important role. It was, it was, and it was one I, you know, I didn't run from, but anyway, um, and I have two out of the three, Matt and Jamie, the, from our last album, the singer and Matt, who I've been with all my life musically, guitar player extraordinaire. Um, we're all going to get together and record that song when I get it finished. 
And I'm going to ask Marshall if he wants to drum. If not, I've got lines on a couple other drummers. I need a drummer. You know, I need, like, you know, we're not going to try and get, probably go back full time to doing the band anymore. But we want to, they're going to help me try and put out that one more song. You know, I that just feel like nice. I need to do that. Yeah, I feel like I need to do that. You know, but even hauling equipment to a studio. <laughs> I mean, we're 64 and 63 years old, respectively. And like, all oh, that seems like work now, man. You know? The stuff you used to think nothing of doing. Uh, nothing. Is different. Well, so now, so now, so basically you have, uh, what, 29 years in playing then? No, no, no. 39 years 20, in. 25, I started playing. But yeah, now I'm 64. 39. 39. Yeah, that's a lot of time and, you know, and stuff. And uh, that is great. Uh, any yeah, but look, 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 look at what it got me. Look what he got me. He got me all this stuff, man. They're two two full albums of originals. So the first the first one wasn't a fluke. Yeah, I, I think that's great. And you know, I I think sometimes what I hope is, is for all of our art that maybe in our lifetime it won't be appreciated, but someone might find it later on and find what gems it really was or appreciate it or it might be a new you know a new revival of uh the stuff we all did back in the day and uh you know, you know. like i said sometimes i think the younger people don't give the us uh, old farts the respect we need but i don't know you know we didn't give anybody respect back then well, either and that was kind of our thing not giving people respect. i like to say the only constant is change so you know change is good you know I mean, we did what we did and they'll do what they'll do, I guess, you know, you know, as the younger kids. I mean, I like some of the new music. I can't deny that, you know, I mean, there's um just so much stuff out there now, especially now that everything's gone digital and everybody's their own recording studio. It's hard to even keep up with what you really want to listen to. You know, it's just so much out there in the digital world. And so it'll who, never are you, who are some of your present day favorites? Present day. Present day? Okay. Um uh, Circuline. Um uh, I, I can't remember their name right now. I, my daughter turned me on to them. They um they do music that's kind of prog, but they also have a comic book that goes with their album every time. Uh, hmm. what's her name? Uh I can't remember. I like the Decemberist. Um I mean, some of the ones you might recognize would be like, I like Breaking Benj, um, Breaking Benjamin, you know, things like that. Um, but as far as new music, I, I would say I, I've been more into like cover bands of the old stuff now, like tribute bands. I go to see the musical box, which does all the early Genesis, and they do it to a T. And I just got done last week going to see a band in uh, Phoenixville called total mass retained which is a yes tribute band and i'm going to see them again and i'm telling you that's my stuff still it really is the problem a prog man i'm going to see john anderson in hershey in june you know john anderson from yes is coming to hershey yep yep, yep. i'm going to see him again and they you know he's he's now you talk about getting up there he's uh 80 i think 82 or more i think he's 82 years old something like that and he's still just nailing everything. He's got the voice of an angel. I just posted a song of him when he was um, about 78 years old a few years back singing um, Close to the Edge. And, you know, if you get a chance, check it out. It's on my Facebook page. Well, i tell you who I'm going to go see next month, and this will sound funny, uh, Adam Ann. Uh, I saw that. I Ann. saw that. What do you think? You don't drink, you don't smoke. What do you do? <laughs> and you know i don't drink and i don't smoke but i've gotten no. in plenty of trouble in my day so i'm uh, going up on I'm going up on two years without a cigarette brother there you go congratulations yeah. and uh i think you said your blood sugar's been good too well i just had a scare this morning i was up to 241 so i had to take three units of nova log that happens every now and then because i wasn't behaving i ate leftover of all things burger king for breakfast and that just it was just dumb i was being stupid you know, and then I had prostate cancer too, but I think they got it all. We'll find out in three more months. Well, the Burger King could have been worse. It could have been McDonald's. So, you know. So. Right, right. You know, but, you know, I knew better, you know, and sometimes I cheat just because I can't go all the time without eating something that tastes like it has sugar in it. But, 
for the most part, yeah, I'm 100% on target with my, you know, goals on my blood sugar. So I came well, I'll tell you what, we, we've been on here about it our time. Uh, okay. Anything you'd want to say in clothing? Closing? Yeah, clothing. Anything you want to yeah. say in clothing? Hopefully you're in clothing. I'm going to say Joey Wells is out there, my pal, brother. Love you all to death. Man, not, to, not, not to death to death, but I love you, brother. Um, and, love him uh, for life. How's that? Yeah, I love him for life. Um, and let's see. Um, big shout out to Canadian American Records, to Orchid and Sony Music, who we're part of. Um, and um, let's see. Oh, and wanted to mention, too, that Joey Wells also got a Grammy nomination through our band. It was um, in 2018 for producer of the year, non-classical category for um, our album, Hidden Broken Pieces. So, you know, we have that common thread, me and you, Joey, you know? Yeah, you well, share, share the love. And, and but We have that common thread now. Yeah, when I got the two Grammys, they're shared with, it, with Joey because of me writing the songs and him performing. Right, so, right. you know, it, it's good to love and uh, to share the love and to pay it forward. And I'm glad you're still doing it. And uh, let me know when you're uh, doing that song. I'd like to maybe help you out if I, I can fit it in. And it's always good to Dude. talk to you and Dude. do things with you. That, that, would, that would be fantastic, man. I mean, because I don't sing anymore because we were trying to make money. So I took myself off the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, whatever. I mean, you know, there's well, always something to do in a studio, man. Even if it's ringing a bell or hitting well, rock. Or, the you know. When I sung, sang those two songs with you, it took, it took us a whole practice to find two songs you could fit my voice in. So, you yeah, know, I mean, yeah. let's be honest there, you know? Yeah. Jake, Jamie, our singer, current singer, she's just got a beautiful voice, you know? She sounds like the girl from Effernescence, most people say. See, that so. puts us, me and you to shame then. Then it makes it rougher on us, you know. Yeah. So well, thanks, so, Craig, for uh being with us. And, and I wish you plug. let me give one shameless plug before you sign off. Sure, go ahead. www.tacurpa.com, T-U-K-U-R-P-A, Tacurpa.com. Go to the website, click on any music page, click on any song title to hear us. Go to the exposure page and it'll give you a breakdown of all our Grammy nominations by year, category, and genre. And just have fun, you know? And I will put that link, link like they say, down below. Oh, okay. Put it down so, there. So thank you, Craig. And uh, thank, thank you. you for uh, your continuous support of me and, and vice versa. I've always been there trying to help you guys out. And, yes, you uh, have. I will see you soon and talk to you soon. Right. Thank you, uh, and uh, peace and love, brother. Lay words of our last friend, our famous friend in common, shake, rattle, and roll. There you go. All right. Uh, and, and rock around the clock. <laughs> and rock around the clock, because happy days are here again, my friend. There you go. See you soon. <laughs> Thank you. See you, John. Bye.